So here we are again. Um, tonight I'm going to do something completely new and different. I was at the store and I picked up this orzo, which looks really, really good. Um, it's a whole wheat pasta, so I'm not really familiar with it. I haven't used it before. So I thought I'd give it a shot and I figured um, it's dark in color so it looks like it would have a lot of flavor. So I'm going to pair it with a, a couple of things that I, I think would go well with it. I'm going to make, uh, I think, a mushroom cream sauce. So here are my lovely mushrooms. So going to cook them with um, my organic onion. Um, I have some really great French bread these three heirloom tomatoes that are perfectly ripe and I'll bet they taste wonderful. They look really cute. I also have um, some organic dandelion and my parsley and my olive oil and a bit of milk. I'm not gonna use cream. So I will pair the milk and the flour and make a, make a thicker sauce out of it instead of using heavy cream. So that is the, the stage it's set, and I will show you what it all looks like. So at first, I'm going to cook down my onions, get that started. At the same time, I'm starting my water to boil for the orzo. It's not going to take very long, so that's why I'm getting a lot of things started at the same time, I'm literally going to have just a matter of minutes before the orzo is almost done. And I don't want it to cook all the way. I actually want it a little bit on the firm side, more than al dente, because I want to finish it here in this pan once I get the sauce with the mushrooms going. So as you can see, the onions are pretty well cooked down. I almost want them to disintegrate. Um even though they won't completely, but I, I do want them to be really, really soft. These are my tomatoes. I couldn't get it all to fit in one bowl, so that's why I have two. So I have plenty for making sauce. And um, I've picked out these, my dandelion leaves, and I have them in water because they're, you know, they're sandy. Um, so if you soak them in a little bit of cool water, the sand will, will come off of them and settle at the bottom, and then you can just um, rake them up from the top and then chop them and throw them in, but they'll be last. That'll be the last thing I do. Um, there was a lot more. I just don't need that much of it. And then here are my mushrooms. Uh, of course, I diced up my portobellos, and I decided to put them back in this container because it kind of makes it easy. So right now, I have my water going for my pasta. It's almost ready. It's getting close. Those are sesame seeds in there, if you're wondering what the specs are. Um, okay, so I am going to start with my sauce here. I'm going to go ahead and start putting in uh, my mushrooms. I have a lot here to cook down. <clears throat> down in there. I really don't want to overcook any of this. They're going to soak up a lot of that juice. And there was a little bit of oil in the bottom. I know, uh, you know, it's a common thing for people to put a lot of oil with the mushrooms saying, oh, they soak it up like a sponge. Yes, fine, but, you know, it's still oil. It, it's not, uh, even though it's good fat, it's not fat-free. <laughs> it's, it's still fat. So I don't want to put any more than I have to. So I put enough for the onions to cook them down. But at this point, I will not be adding more oil so that the mushrooms can soak them up. That's just kind of gross. Instead, 
if anything, and I already added my vinegar, by the way. It was a part of that reduction. So if anything, I'm going to add my tomatoes to add moisture. And I lightly salted them. Um, that's what this is. This is um, the pink salt. It just has uh, trace minerals that are in it. It's from the Himalayas. And it's very tasty. So I throw in my heirloom tomatoes. go. And that is going to reduce down, get nice and watery. So here we are. The pasta is almost done. I only used a cup of it. Um, I can always make fresh pasta um, and it just gets all soggy and nasty if you don't eat it all. So there's no point in making an overabundance of pasta, to be honest. You can save the pasta water and cook it up another day. So I only used a cup. Um, it has been seven minutes, coming on eight minutes soon, and I'm going to actually put it into here because it's not quite finished cooking yet, and I want it to finish in here so it gets some of this juice. And then I'll go ahead and add, and I've already chopped up my parsley and, of course, my dandelion leaves. They will go in last. So my pasta is in, and you can see them around. They have to finish um, because they are whole grain. They take a little bit longer than regular pasta to cook, um, which is fine. There's nothing worse than overcooked pasta. I'd rather it be under. So I am starting to mix in my greens. You can see they're already starting to wilt. I'm just going to mix them in, get everything incorporated. And at the end, based on what the sauce looks like, is how much of the flour I'm going to add to thicken it. And at the last minute, I kind of changed my mind as usual. And because I've never used soy flour as a thickener, I'm afraid it might react like regular flour, which means you have to make a roux. And I'm way past that point. Um, so instead, I'm gonna use a tapioca flour. It will thicken even when cold. It, it doesn't have to be cooked a certain way like regular flour does. You do have to be careful with it. If you use too much of it, um, it will make things turn into like a gel, which actually, you know, uh, cornstarch does the same thing. So you use it sparingly. Um, don't go crazy and dump in a lot. A little goes a very long way, and you'll end up with a really weird goop, and uh, the texture will completely kill it. So just be careful when you use it. Um, one tablespoon at a time, and it may just be one tablespoon, so don't be shocked if that's all it needs. So this is going to cook down a little bit more. I'm really just checking the pasta at this point to see when it's ready. And there's a little grain there. You can see right in the middle of it right there. It's darker and the outsides are lighter. So it's, they're not quite done, but they're almost there. Some of them are starting to look transparent. So I'll just keep an eye on it. So I just took a little taste of the pasta. It's done. I'm gonna dump in my flour. Mix that in. And I am going to turn off the heat here. This smells really good, by the way. Um, the tomatoes are the top note. It just, and it doesn't smell like regular tomato. It just smells like really good basil and tomato, very strong. Um, it just smells great. So I'm really expecting this is gonna be um, a winner. <music> 